Welcome back again class 7. This is teacher Hillary and uh, if you are a parent at home ensure that your son or daughter is attempting the assignments being given from school. So class 6 last time we are talking we are looking at circumference. Today like I promised we are going to tackle perimeter. So before you progress with our lesson ensure you have your pen and some working space. If someone asks you what is perimeter, don't start sweating. Just tell the person that uh, perimeter is the distance around a figure. So that total distance around any figure is the perimeter of that figure. And when you are in class 4, you learned about the perimeter of a square and a rectangle. We also learned that uh, a rectangle is having two opposite sides which are equal. So if you want to find its perimeter, you will just add the length plus the width and then you multiply your answer by 2. In the case of a square, we said all sides are equal. So we will just multiply 4 times the length because all sides are equal. If it is a triangle, we will add the sum or we will get the sum of all the three sides. So we are just adding the three sides of a triangle. That is what we refer to as perimeter. So these formulas will be helpful as we progress with the lesson, uh, as we tackle more examples on perimeter. So our first example for today, we are saying that the perimeter of a rectangle below is 72, find its width. So as a good student, just know that opposite sides are equal and I want you to identify the size that they have given you. So in this case, they have given you 24. Also, you can also write up here 24 because we said opposite sides of a rectangle are equal. So if you add 24 up here and then you add them, so 24 plus 24 will give you 48. The remaining sides are what we call the width, which are opposite also and equal. So if you subtract 72 minus 48, you will get out the term. You are with these two sides are 24. But then you only find this side which is here. So you need to divide your answer by 2. So that you get the width of or one side. This is the one side that is here. Remember 24 is for both this side and the other sides. So we are dividing 24 divided by 2. To get the width. So 24 divided by 2 is 12. Our width is 12. This is a class 4 question. I believe all of you can be able to understand it. So let's move to our next example. So in this example, example number 2, we are saying that. Uh, the area of the square below is 625. Calculate its perimeter. So this question is very easy, but ask yourself if someone gives you the area of a square, are you able to find the length of one side? Remember area of a square is length times length, or you square the length. That means if you find the square root of 625, you can be able to find the length. So in other words, they multiply 25 times 25 to get 625. The square root of 625 is 25. 25 is the length of one side. So if someone asks you the length of one side, your answer is 25. But if the person asks you to find the perimeter, apply your formula that we learned earlier. We said perimeter of a square is 4L. So it is 25 times 4 which equates to a hundred centimeters. So our perimeter is a hundred centimeters. Our third example for today we are saying the area of a square plot is 225 meters squared. Find its perimeter in meters. So this example is like the previous example. What you need to find first is the square root. Ask yourself if the area of this square is 25, what is the length of one side? 
or what they used to multiply so that they got or they get 2025 so the square root of 2025 is 45 i've made the choices maybe to warn those who are always uh, hurry when they see the answer there they jump and then they say okay they start celebrating and say i've gotten the answer so 45 here is the length of one side but the question does not ask you to find the length of one side the question is asking us to find the perimeter so after getting the length of one side apply your formula that is perimeter of a square is equals to 4l which is 45 times 4 which will give us 180 meters so that question also was very easy let's move to our fourth example our last example for today and we are saying that uh, the plot below was fenced with three strands three strands of barbed wire what is the total length of wire required very easy just understand that uh, fencing is around the figure so fencing is going to take place around this plot so nobody is going to find the area we are finding the perimeter. Why? Because fencing indicates that we are fencing around a figure. And around a figure is the perimeter. So distance around a figure is our perimeter. What is the total length of wire required? So after getting our perimeter, we'll just multiply because three strands means you are moving three rounds or three strands of wire will surround this plot. So let's start with our perimeter. 26 plus 24 plus 10 will give you 60. That is the perimeter of this figure. Then multiply by the number of strands. So the number of strands here is 3. If I multiply 60 times 3, my perimeter is 180 centimeters. So the, the total length of wire required is 180 centimeters. So something for you to note is that um, anytime they ask you to find the number or the total length of wire required, the first thing and line the word fencing it is perimeter of any figure that they have asked they have asked you then multiply by the number of strands so if they're using five strands multiply by five if it is four strands multiply by four so in our case here they use three strands that is why i multiply by three very easy also so that marks the end of our lesson for today and I've prepared some assignments for you uh, in the next slide. Four easy questions for you. So ensure you do my work. Don't be lazy. Last time I told you, do something constructive at home. Class six, please. Don't just sleep. So as a parent at home ensure like i told you earlier guide your son or daughter ensure that he or she is doing the work being given from school otherwise i wish you a good time